You spent over five years in the North Vietnamese um, con uh, prisoner of war camp. And right. I was wondering how you were able to relate this experience, as awful as it was, to the experiences the rest of us living in the relative comfort of the leaders here in the United States. Well, first of all, I am proud that we have a country like this where we can live this way. And at the same time, there's, I appreciate it more, I think, you know. Like when I go to bed at night, I'm thankful to have a bed to sleep in. I'm thankful to have a roof over my head. I'm thankful when it's cold that I have a heater in the house, that uh, you know, heating system that keeps me warm and it keeps me cool in the summertime. Uh, because I didn't have those things for five and a half years. Uh, you start to really appreciate the little things. And what I've learned, and I think I knew this before, but it brought it back, is that you can be really happy and have joy no matter where you live. I mean, we live better, the average American lives better than the kings in the old days. They didn't have central heat and air and running water. So we, we live very, very well. Uh, but I appreciate it. I think uh, it's a testament. It, it speaks of who we are and what we've been able to do, that we have this standard of living. But we also have to be careful as we move ahead uh, that we pay for it as we go. You mentioned in your book about guarding your character. What did you mean by this? I talk about guarding your character a lot because I know we're all living one or two choices away from a character failure. And if you ever forget that, you, you, you're you very vulnerable. So uh, when I do my taxes, I tell my CPA to get as close to the line as he can without getting over it. So there's just one step away right there. Uh, as a business person, as a politician, as a school teacher, even as a school teacher, we're having investigations in school teachers in Georgia who were cheating on standardized tests. Not the students, but the teachers. So this issue of honor is very important in our society, and we're much more vulnerable than we think we are. Many Americans wore the POW name bracelet. Yes. Did you know about that when you were over there? And how did no. You we didn't know until we came home, and then uh, a lot of people contacted me and sent their bracelets. Others wrote me, and I said, keep the bracelet. I have plenty. And it was just a powerful expression of concern for our welfare, and it was important. It paid off. And um, were there ever any escape attempts? Yes, there were several escape attempts, but none successful in the North Vietnamese POW camps. Um, they were all recaptured within 24 hours. And uh, one guy was tortured to death after an escape attempt, and several others were almost tortured to death. Free the captives. Mm -hmm. um, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Free the captives means that within each of us, we all are in prison to some emotion or some experience that has happened to us in the past. And as a leader, I try to help others gain freedom. As I've gained freedom, my emotions were shut down after the war. So I try to help others when I see that something is holding them back. I try to, whatever it is, maybe they're not a good listener. Maybe they talk too much. I try to help them gain freedom from whatever is holding them back because they are a captive to it.